This week, parts of New York City turned into an absolute parking lot. Thanks to the United Nations General Assembly, President Biden came to speak. So did Ukrainian President Zelensky, who made his pitch to keep support coming in their fight against Russia's invasion. All right, Peter, how do you think? Well, we'll start with Zelensky. How do you think he did? Well, I, I always think he does good. I'm kind of in the tank for Vladimir Zelensky as a comedian. You know, he was a former <laughs> comedian. Right. And now true. he's president, yeah. so I have hope. Yeah. Different no, role now, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what he has done is been one of the most important leaders of our time. I've been against every war of my generation. I've worked with veterans. I, I've seen horrible things happen to our American veterans community as a result of Iraq and the Afghanistan war. This is a war that I think is so important for the American people to support. And I think what Vladimir Zelensky and the Ukrainian people and young people have done, I watch in every day in amazement and in deep privilege knowing, hopefully, that I'll never, my family will never have to be in that position. And yet today he was yet, disinvited from yes. being able to speak to a joint session of Congress, which I just thought was so reprehensible. And we may not have more funding. I mean, this is Republican again, Party's in the tank I mean, for Vladimir Putin. It's, it's crazy. crazy. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. In the House. In the House, not in the Senate. Fair Let's enough. Just not be all, careful when we say that. And not, and not every member of the House. Not every Republican a in the House. A huge amount of Republicans are... The fact that they will not take... That they will not support with funding... Volodymyr Zelensky and the Ukrainian people would suggest that they are for Putin. I will temper my language, but still, in the House. But I don't understand this either. I don't know why it's a, a, a vote winner. I mean, the, the Reagan Center had, had, has had polls out there of Republican voters. Do you support the Ukrainians in the war? And it, it, the majority of Republican voters support the Ukrainians. Yeah. So I still don't understand... But well, they like support funding. Thing. They support American funding that war. So I think that there is... The money it, going I mean, and if you ask them... They will tell you that what they're talking about is accountability and about where that money goes. And let's remember that there have been times in American history when uh, the United States, for example, supported uh, the the uh, removal of uh, Saddam Hussein, and then they found you know hundreds of millions of dollars of cash in Afghanistan. Uh, yeah, in, yeah. In Afghanistan. So, in other words. I think that there is a position of how much is unlimited and what does unlimited mean. But Vladimir Zelensky, you know, Jose Ortega y Gasset, the Spanish philosopher, said, I am me plus my circumstances. And it goes to show you what one person can do and what that one person can make a difference, as Zelensky has done, literally becoming this wartime president. He's been important, oh, but yeah. let's give a lot of credit to the Ukrainian people. I mean, like That's, you're saying, give them a lot of credit yeah. to him, but there's a, the, the Ukrainian no people have been... In Dallas. Spirit. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, look, how much money did he get? He got uh, $325 million from Joe Biden during their sit-down at the White House, right? This week he goes and he gets that. What's that for? Artillery, uh, more munitions, uh, tanks, that a kind of thing. A lot of it Anti goes to U.S. defense companies who then are, are providing yeah, the military it's assistance. It's American jobs. They're Republican districts, too, and the Republican the, the voters in those districts don't, don't... But then we have yet. to lay that out for the American people, because when they think it's a blank check... And then they see the pictures the, of what's, you know, happened in the past. In other words, I, I do think that there is a question of just... Show me the money. Well, yeah, yeah, accountability is okay. If you can say, here's where the money's yeah, going. I mean, at, to your point, always, you're talking about companies and how they would run their business. I mean, you would have to be accountable to where that money's going. When you're talking about $24 billion, it is a lot of money. But Joe Biden needs to make the case, to your point as well, about just being able to communicate with people and say, here's what it's going to. Do that to Congress. Make that explanation. And then maybe they'll get it. I'd like to believe you're right, but I hate to disagree I'm with you. I'm always idealistic. <laughs> but I just yeah. think it's a smokescreen. I don't think Republicans who are saying we need accountability really believe they need accountability. No, they're trying to find. You ask them, that's what they'll tell you. Yes, right, exactly. So I think this, even if in your perfect world, Biden and the administration be able to show some transparency about the money is going, it's not going to sway these Republicans on the Hill to suddenly vote for Ukrainian funding. So I think it is, it is a, a, a Sisyphean. Forget so it. then how do you get the funding? Do you put this as part of another bigger package? Is this an add-on? Is this something that you do? Or do you, do you separate it alone? That's what Kevin McCarthy thinks they should do. This is such a small percent of our do. defense budget, which goes such a long way for a cause to I fight I remind Russia. you that this is happening at the same time that Russia is doing everything to get more ammunition. And they're, you know, they had the, the Kim Jong-un like visiting North Korea. Yeah. Uh, you know, North Korea. Yep. China yep. is next. Yep. Uh, Iran continues to supply them with, with drones that are killing civilians. I mean, this is going on right now. The price of oil. Oil is now up, what, probably 90, 95, 90 yeah, 92, yeah. 95, and that's certainly bringing in money for a lot of the enemies of the United so States. And all of this is happening 
as we're heading into a presidential election. And just a week ago, Vladimir Putin took a look at Donald Trump's legal woes and said this is political persecution. So the question is, mm -hmm. for, for, for Vladimir Putin, it's a waiting game. He wants to see who is going to win this election because he feels strongly or he's betting Donald Trump and Republicans will pull their support from Ukraine. And what would help Donald Trump in his the run of a lifetime, because he is running for his freedom, a whole lot of disinformation, misinformation, and naughty behavior by potential some help from Vladimir Putin and his cohorts. So I used to worry about this a lot more than I do now because Ooh, I good, used to believe I used to believe like you that time was on Putin's side. The allies who are unified are going to break apart. He's going to eventually wear it up. But actually, remember Evgeny Prigozhin. There is also instability inside Russia, mm -hmm. and the fact that he has True. to go to Kim Jong Un for weaponry. Yep. Yes, give yep. me a break. He is not winning this war, and I think we underestimate the extent to which the unity of the Ukrainian people and the funding that we're giving to the Ukrainians right now is having a huge impact inside Russia. should be concerned. I think what you're saying, you're concerned about the point that you're making. I am certainly concerned about it is he can spend billions on this war. 250,000 Russian men he sent to their, their death, by the way, maybe more. A quarter of a million men have already died. It's, it's staggering to try to fathom that. But you're, I think you're talking about election interference. He could spend $7 million trying to interfere in our election. And nothing could be better for his war against Ukraine and NATO than re-electing Donald Trump. That's a minor Donald price Trump to pay. Donald Trump dogged on NATO for four straight years. Yeah. And the unification of NATO, of, of the U.S. and our NATO alliance in the last two years has been extraordinary. That will go up in smoke if Joe Biden's not re-elected. Yeah, I, I just keep thinking you know, that this is bigger than the United States even. And that's for why sure. the importance of uh, Zelensky and him continuing to be you know, focusing on this issue. Poland is going to have elections coming up, mm -hmm. uh, is just announcing that they're going to be cutting back yep. on yep. their support. So, so it, it, this is the world. Year. And, you know, Italy, for example, it did have that change of government, even though the prime minister is very pro-Ukrainian. Yeah. But we're seeing what's going on in Spain. There may be elections, even though it looks Sweden. like uh, yeah. Sweden. So it, it's, it's, you know... it's NATO it, members. Yes, and it's a large uh, uh, global problem. The fact that Kevin McCarthy said no to Zelensky speaking before Congress. What does that do to the United States on the world stage when we used to be the beacon? We were the ones who took action, spoke out against those who were committing war crimes. And the fact that he's like, mm, maybe next time. What does that say about us? Our allies, have, have, already, our allies have already started recalculating, right? Our allies in Asia, we've suddenly seen the Koreans and the Japanese sort of warming to each other because they don't know if the Americans are going to be there for them anymore. Our European allies are looking that they may have to pro provide their own defense. The Trump administration has forced a rethink of whether American leadership is going to be there for the long term, which may not necessarily be a bad thing, but it does go to our ability to lead the world on these kinds of issues. And Alex, I think it's a, it's a long term problem. I, I, I agree. I think it's a big problem. I think Joe Biden is doing everything he can to say we're back. We are going to take leadership here. This is what I want to do. But the, the problem is this war is just inching, inching along. I was reading about the 3rd Urban Battalion in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. These guys are the best of the best, right? Mm -hmm. Completely volunteer group. It took them one month to make yeah, one yeah. mile's worth of advancement. Yeah. Climbing over, if the you know. If was going well, we would not be having this conversation. No, that's the problem. Yeah. That's the problem. Because the, the, the land is mined and they, I mean, if we had any idea what they were up against, my God. I mean, Richard Engel told me today in, in uh, his segment uh, that there is an area that the Russians have, have mined an area the size of Florida. God. Yeah, in Ukraine. Just get an idea on that. And and I think that when we, you know, started this conversation about the traffic problems here in New York this week, I got to tell you, uh, Joe Biden had a speech on the United Nations General Assembly, uh, which he and he talked about the importance of supporting democracy. Yeah. And it's so important that we recognize said, that that's the role but it's that the easy United States for people to not focus on it because they don't think about democracy uh, like a kitchen table issue, right? You take it for granted. You yeah, take it they for don't granted. Know yes. but it, yeah. Exactly. It's a really important yeah, I'll point. I'll tell you this. The people of Venezuela, the people of Cuba, yeah, the sure. people of Nicaragua have, have a very clear understanding of what democracy is because they haven't had it. And they know living every day under a totalitarian or authoritarian state is a day where they but have no think, rights and no freedom. I just got to say, you said, what, is it, what does it look like for us that we didn't invite Zelensky? I mean, what does it look It looks like. And a lot of Republicans support Vladimir Putin. I've seen it over and over in focus groups and questions. Hmm. What's wrong with Putin? Putin is the worst 
monster of our lifetime. What he has done across his entire region and to his own people is terrible. And yet so many Republicans look the other way. Why? We are out of time. Well, here's one of the issues, because the truth matters, but only if you see it. And tons of Americans are only watching a certain sect of well media said. Well said. and That's they right. never hear it. Okay.